Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, 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 guys. It is Old Man G here back again with another um, top 10 United players weekly. It's gonna it's our weekly um top 10 Manchester United show, um, where I basically go through who are my opinion um the best players to play this weekly, uh, well, the best players in the United United squad uh, this week. So in, in the case of this week, it's predominantly looking at um, the Sheffield United game and, of course, the fantastic win over Leeds. But remember, if you're new to the channel, to like, share and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Follow us on Twitch, United X, and smash the notification button. Play this Manchester United news. I'm going to be doing some more community updates. Well, I'm going to be doing more of these pre-recorded videos, but also some community updates, just sort of, Maybe personal things like like where the channels are, what to do, you know, like uh, things like you know trying to get other people involved. I don't want to just do this by myself as much anymore, um, and even just like different ideas to what you guys have for the channel. Because obviously, I have my ideas, what things, but what actually are your ideas? What do you guys want? It's your channel as well. It's not just me just producing content. But what do you guys actually want to see from this channel? Within reason, obviously. Um, but anyway, regardless, today. This is actually top 10 United play, play, players weekly. So without further ado, let's get into um, number 10. Now, um, last week's number 10 was Donny van der Beek, who unfortunately has dropped out of the top 10 um, because he just hasn't been, been picked, to be quite frank. So in this instance, it's this guy, Dan James, Dan James. Now, of course, Dan James only played against Leeds. And I think a lot of people were surprised to see Dan James in the lineup. Um, let's be real, a lot of people were um, fuming, fuming at Oli Gunnar Solskjaer when they saw that Dan James was on the team sheets. You know, Oli's got him messed up again, what's going on? And basically, within about two minutes, everyone was silenced. Um, that's the problem sometimes of making a judgment based on the on the on the team selection. I think I think if there's one lesson to learn over the last couple of games, it's that I think it's best to make a judgment after the game is finished. OK, because there's a lot of Oli out when they see the team, Oli out after the first half. And then after the game, it's like, oh, you know, so I think at the very least, Oli, Dan James and various other people, you should give them at least 90 minutes to prove what they can do. And in this game, especially against Leeds, they did that. Daniel James, good goal. The most important thing for me is confidence. And this is what's important, certainly going into Leicester game at the weekend, is that we go in and take this confidence. Leicester have a, have a not great home form, to be honest, and we have a very excellent form away from home. So if we can go into that game with confidence um, and guile, and what better way than to put six pass leads and for Daniel James to get himself in the score machine. Um, the thing is, Daniel James, I think there's a quality player there. The issue for me with Daniel James constantly has always been his decision-making. If his football intelligence was better, if it was just that bit better, then he would be he would be a good winger for us. He really would be. But um, his decision-making, even this game, to a lesser certain extent, it was, still wasn't great. Um, but yeah, Daniel James is my is my number 10. Now, moving on to my number 9, um, Victor Lindelof, the Iceman. The Iceman, the Iceman. So he's he's uh, he's, he's displaced Harry Maguire. He's also fallen out of the top 10 because I'm getting a bit tired of him not basically being able to sort of man-mark a corner properly or organise the defence in that respect or go on the tallest player. But Lichter Lindelof um, had probably one more solid out of the, the centre-backs in a sense of, like, one thing, that pass, I think, towards... I think it was, was I think it was Rashford. I think for the first goal, we would go down and then ping that ball that he made to Rashford in a Sheffield United game. Absolutely brilliant distribution by Victor Lindelof. Um, whose ball uh, control is very, very good this this week. Um, and all around seems solid, to be honest. And like I've said several times, you know, Victor Lindelof and Chris Smalling wasn't a bad... We, we, we kept... I think we were... We kept... We had the best defensive record in that league when City won it with Lindelof and Smalling as our centre-backs. We did. And people forget that um, because they still think that Chris Smalling was a crap defender or whatever. So I rate Victor Lindelof... Um, I just think that much like Harry Maguire, like you need a quick centre back next to him. You know, you need that next to him. And if you have that option, um, then he can do business. It's just that I have a feeling that, well, now that Harry Maguire is captain, Harry Maguire has to play. And I think that was a that was a mistake, you know. So, but I'm not gonna go through on that that. But for me, Victor Lindelof had a, had a solid week um in that centre back position. Um, and uh and, and hopefully, you know, he'll do the same against Leicester. Right. 
Number eight, Ansi Marshall. Ansi Marshall, who um, I don't think he was even in. So, so uh, which, who, who, who else fell out? There may be a few people that fell out of this. Um, I'll come to it anyway. But Ansi Marshall is a new climber at number eight. Um, say what you will about Marshall, you know. So I think getting that goal against Sheffield certainly um, gave us confidence, 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 at least wanting to try anyway. And Whatever you say about Mar, yes, he didn't. He, he missed two sitters. Let's be frank against Leeds, to where we should have really put the game, you know, a good seven or eight, etc. Um, it's also what he's doing off the ball as well, and that's very important with Martial. Like you know, Firmino gets a lot of credit for what he does off of the ball, um, but Anthony Martial. Um, doesn't you know we focus more on you know it's a bit hypocritical where we're like as where where with um Werner for example and Firmino we talk about oh what they're doing off the ball what they're doing off the ball the time you know whereas with say Abamyang and Martial um it's like why aren't they scoring tons of goals why aren't they scoring tons of goals why aren't they scoring tons of goals and I think the goals will come from Anthony Martial they will in time um yes it is frustrating to watch at times but his movement off the ball, especially during defenders, I mean, again, instrumental in getting a penalty against Leeds. And I always say when Marshall's on the pitch, because of his ability on the ball and to dribble and take on a man, you know, we are always, I think he's probably won the most penalties for us. My second is probably Bruno, you know. So um, for me, um, it's just, it, it will just get better and better. And I expect, well, I would like to see him try out on the left. You know, I would be, uh, you know, put Cavani in the middle, Put Rashford on the right and put the uh, Marshall. On. I would like to see that against Leicester on uh, on Saturday. To be honest, see it how that works um, and take it from there because um, I certainly think that we can utilize the best of those three. You know, in that position, you can get crosses into Cavani, for example. Marshall could come from the left. Rashford can do his thing on the right, being right footed. Um, you know, I think that I think that we could do a business. You know, so but you no, know, fingers crossed. More goals from Anthony Marshall. At number seven, it is Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw has been very, very, very good um, since his comeback. He was, I think, he was fifth before. He dropped down a bit, but that's just because I feel there've been slightly better performances. Um, again, like Luke Shaw has improved. Uh, whatever you think, he's actually improved, and certainly defensively, um, he's, he's improved a lot. I, I certainly would trust him more so defensively than I would Tellez. Um, but even going forward, Luke Shaw has been good and giving us options, you know. So I think it's good that there's competition with tennis there. You know, and hopefully they'll sort of um, bat it out in that position. Um, but what can I say about Luke Shaw? I mean, yes, I don't think... Did he get one assist? I think he might have had one assist this week. I'm not entirely sure. He scored so many goals. He scored, what, nine goals um, in two games. Um, so I bet he probably got one. Um, but um, he's been he's been consistent and he's been very solid since he's come back from injury. And the, and the main thing with Shaw is just that, just hopefully just doesn't get injured again, to be honest. So that's Luke Shaw at number seven. Number six, it's Pastor Fred. Pastor Fred, Pastor Fred, who has dropped a bit from second, again, just because I think there have been other players that have been better than him, in my opinion. Um, Pastor Fred is probably our most consistent midfielder. Um, and I keep on saying over and over again in, in that, um, you could argue he's almost our most important midfielder. The dynamism, the energy, the interception, all of that is important with Fred in the team. And while Scott McTominay had a brilliant, brilliant game um, against um, uh, against um, Leeds, I still do think that part of the reason why, you know, we could disrupt Leeds in the midfield and we had that in general pace is also because of what Fred was doing and also the fact that Fred um, was essentially playing in a more um, defensive position. You know, Fred in that game, you could argue, was the was not always because Bruno often dropped deep, but at times, most times, he actually was our, our effectively our CDM, um, and that's a very important role. And F Fred obviously needs to improve on his on his ball retention um, as well as his touch. I think because it's very easy to press him and to win the ball, especially against um, better teams. But I don't know. I mean, I generally think that if Fred was playing against Leipzig. I mean, if you look at the Champions League, which player was missing in both of those games? Fred in both of those games. One because he was dropped, and then the second was because he was suspended. Um, 
if he was playing in those games, I generally think that we um, or and and for start and even the PSG game where he was sent off, you know, Fred not being pr- there, being a presence has hindered us. And if he played against Istanbul, I think we would have beaten Istanbul. If he played the four ma- minutes against PSG, I think we would have at least gotten a point from PSG. And if he played against Leipzig, I think we would have gotten at least a point from Leipzig as well. So it is what it is. I rate Fred. I think it's very important to weigh Manchester United function. And if we are going to push on this season, he's very, very important to, um, to, to what we need to do. Number five, Bruno, 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 Bruno. Bruno Fernandes, man, since he's come into this club, um, has he's transformed it. Um, and let's be real, we've lost, I think, since he's been, I think we've only lost three Premier League games. And those, that, that was this season, you know, um, Tottenham, Arsenal and uh, Paris. I don't think we've lost any other games since. And he came in January. Um, so three Premier League defeats since Bruno Fernandes um, came to the club, basically. Um, he's been a revelation. Um, it's a myth that him and Pogba can't play together because they can, um, but we have that flexibility now. Uh, you, again, almost every game. I mean, I was I I, I didn't captain him this week in my fantasy football. I should have because um, I took a risk on Marcus, but I should have captained him because this guy, at least almost a, almost he would have a contribution a game, whether it's an assist, whether it's a goal against Leeds. It was two goals, I think, and I think against um, Sheffield. He had, uh, does he have a goal and assist? I can't remember. He might have had a goal and assist. I think in Sheffield, it was, um, I think he might, I think, or well, might have an assist. But the point I'm trying to make is that this guy, man, always contributing, even when he's having a not great game, a quiet game, he'll contribute in some capacity. Whether that's an assist, or whether that's a goal or a penalty kick, whatever, he will always be contributing all the time you know um it's very difficult to rate this player less less than a five in this but i just want to i want to highlight some other players i think but bruno again much like fred is very key to this team incredibly key to this team number four david de gea man david de gea david de gea david de gea bro um the thing is is that Again, this is the thing about competition. I generally think that when you have competition, players improve. And that's why I think that in the Jan transfer window, you need to get a centre-back and you need to get a right-back. Because we have competition in other areas, roughly. But the two areas that we don't have a a lot of competition in are centre-back and right-back. There's no one competing with Wan-Bissaka right now. And there's no one competing with Heimer, Kwan, Lindelof, really. There is a left-back, there is a midfield, and there is in the front three. There's plenty of competition in those positions. But in centre-back and right-back, there isn't. And and what are, those, what are the areas we're calling suffering at? Those areas. Since Henderson came back to Old Trafford, to be honest, David De Gea has looked great. Two fantastic saves against Sheffield and Leeds, to be honest, to stop some, to keep us in the game um, or certainly stop a comeback. And I remember the one, I think it was against Sheffield, the one where like it was going in like he literally crawls it before it goes over the line. I mean, David De Gea is looking back to his best. Um, after having a, a, I would argue, a not great season last season, he's looking very, very, very good and props to him. And I do think that part of that comes to keeping Henderson out of the squad. And if he continues to do that, like, you know, does a great performance against Sheffield, brilliant performance against Leicester, you're thinking Henderson is probably going to have to go on loan, to be honest, because he's just not going to get the game time. So David De Gea at number four. Number three, Marcus Rashford. Marcus, Marcus Rashford. Marcus, Marcus Rashford, man. Marcus Rashford. He's getting his mojo back. He is getting his mojo back, Marcus Rashford. Um, very, very crucial for us when we play our counter-attacking football, which is a pound and not a tactic. It is a tactic. It is a tactic. Just to put it out there, guys, counter-attacking is actually a tactic. Um, but he's, he's it's critical to that. He really is. Um, much like um, Daniel James and certainly Mason Greenwood, his his um, his decision making could be better. But nine times out of ten, Marcus Rashford eventually, because he gets so many chances, um, eventually he'll score the goals, and that's the thing. Eventually, give him time, he will score the goals, and he does. Whether it's contributions or what have you, um, 
that finish, I mean, people were fuming. you got to remember, people were fuming when we can see the first goals against Sheffield. It was like, for goodness sake, not again. Why do we always concede first? Uh, which was nice not doing that against Leeds, by the way. Um, and then that touch, Lindelof assist, touch, boom. 1-1, one, one, let's go. Let's get back into this game. And then, boom, Martial scores second goal. Man, you know, and you're just thinking like, geez, we need to we need to kill, kill this game off. And then I think I think Rashford scored the third goal, I think. Um, I need to double check, but but man, um that touch, I just still remember it. And I was just like, whoa. And you're just like, right, okay, come on, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um He's getting it back into his groove. He's getting back into his groove, you know. And whatever people say, you know, this is a guy that scored, what, seven CL goals in the group stage. Hattrick against Leipzig. He scored two goals against... Uh, did he score? No, he scored... Yeah, he scored a goal against PSG. Um, then he scored two goals against um, Istanbul again. Um, and then he scored another goal against... I think one of the P I think he scored the PSG goal actually. Yeah. So seven goals, man. Um put respect on this guy's name. You know, that's more CL goals than Hazard has an entire career. Um long may it continue, you know. And like like I always say, Rashford, Greenwood, and Daniel James, these guys have the potential to be really, really good top class players. The one thing that they need to work on as they get older and hopefully going to their prime is their decision-making needs to be better. It has to be better. Martial's decision-making is, 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 is good. Yeah. It's just that his finishing recently has not been great, but his decision-making is good. Martial Greenwood and Daniel James right now, I still struggle with that, you know, so, but fingers crossed that will improve. Last two, last two, last two. And I think it's going to go to the two, in my opinion, um, influential maestros um, in, in, in um in each game um because they, they both didn't play two games but they're imperative to both um however i've got to give one of them the first place just because you know of well the goals really um poor pogba who to be fair and people say i'm not issue with pogba i don't have an issue with pogba at all pogba was first first and has just dropped down to second poor pogba um i would love for pogba to sign a new contract I would love for Pog to sign a new contract. Um, it's just getting the impression that he's not. Maybe it's negotiation tactic. I don't know. But the Leeds game showed in a way, even though it pl we played into Bielsa's hands, that we don't necessarily need poor Pogba. Um, no, I get that. No, I'll take that back. We need poor Pogba. We definitely, definitely, definitely need poor Pogba. Um but he's not as essential as he was before. That's 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 a, that's, a, that's a better way of putting it there, because Paul Pogba was someone that like like you, like you saw against West Ham, someone that can you can give you something out of nothing, can dictate the play, can drive the ball, can take on a man, can hold on. He's got so much that a lot of our midfielders do not have, and that's why I think he's very 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 important. Can we still win games without him? Yes, but that Sheffield United game we bossed because of Paul Pogba in his stride. And I would like, again, I would love to see the 4 for 3 I would love to see, you know, a Fred, a, a Pogba, Bruno, um, or a Matic, you know, Pogba, Bruno. I think I, I think you've got to play Fred now. I think Fred is, is, you can't drop Fred unless it's a rest. So in which case, you've got two other spots, unless you play a diamond um, and have, and even then, that's not great. Um, so you have to have, two of midfielders and Bruno is basically going to be there. So the other midfielder is going to probably be Pogba um, or Van der Beek, who, who's or well, maybe not Van der Beek. It's not getting a touch, you know? So it's you basically Fred and Bruno are shoo-ins. So it's between McTominay and Pogba. And it generally depends on how um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, sets up, whether he wants to be a bit more expansive um, or whether he wants to be a bit more, in quote, defensive, even though I don't think um, McTominay is, uh, as you saw, in this game, McTominay almost played the Pogba role. He was uh, way more advanced than the likes of Bruno and Fred and going forward. And maybe that's where McTominay's best position is, going forward, driving and doing his thing. 
he might be better in that position. He's certainly not a CDM. And speaking of Scott McTominay, he's number one today. Scott McTominay, Scott McTominay, Scott McTominay. I mean, I never thought as a Manchester United fan, I would have to say Scott McTominay is our um, player of the week this week. I never thought those words would come on, but they have. They have, they have, they have. Um, he had a brilliant, brilliant game against um, Leeds. He almost looked like prime Iniesta. Um, you know, okay, he's not Iniesta, obviously, but he looked like it in this game, um, especially that one assist for the James something. He went for like two or three people during through and then just the freedom. He was just great. And again, it, it's, it's a conversation that, you know, but he was great because of what he was doing going forward. You know, so the question again remains, is he a CDM? I don't think so. You know, because a CDM doesn't do that. Um, and that's why I think it's imperative that, I mean, when you look at the whole box-to-box -box, hold me fullers we have, Bruno, Van der Beek, um, Fred, Scott McTominay, all those players, all those midfielders can play that role. But the only player that is in that squad that can play the CDM role properly is Matic. And Matic is obviously, you know, with legs, etc. cetera. So um, fair play to Scott McTominay. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant performance against Leeds. Um I would suspect he's going to start against Leicester. I suspect Oli's going to go back to the 4 2 3 1. I bet Scott McTominay is going to be told to be a bit more defensive. We'll see. I would like to see Pogba and Van der Beek come in, um, but I suspect that they will play against Everton in midweek and we'll take them some there. Um, so that's it, guys. Um, thank you guys for tuning in and watching for our weekly Top 10 United Players Weekly. Hope you enjoyed the show. Remember to like, 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 share, and subscribe. Two Red Devils still do. Follow us on Twitter and X. Post your suggestions as well in the comments. I'm really um, curious as to what uh, what what's the type of content you guys want. Maybe you want a, a top 10, um, maybe a different type of top 10. You know, maybe um, a, like, a, I don't know, um, top 10 attackers, you know, or top 10 midfielders or top 10 forwards or whatever. Just something for you guys and for the community. And remember, consider supporting the channel by subscribing, liking, and potentially also becoming a member. I'd really appreciate it. Have a nice day, everyone, and cheers.